in John chapter 5, you ever wondered why the Lord had a pool where he sent an angel in a certain season? And that angel was responsible for releasing healing on the person that jumped first into the pool. If you really think about the whole concept, why wasn't everybody getting healed? Because God doesn't respond to needs, but he does respond to your atmosphere to get help for the need. He doesn't respond to just the problem, but your pursuit for wisdom for the problem. There was nothing that moved the, moved the angel to heal anybody else in their issue unless they step first into that water. Now, saints, also you could discern this, that God has a hatred for slow. And slowfulness is his pet peeve. He doesn't like slow people. He doesn't like when you take long to get truth. Saints, if you be honest, some of you are the age that you at, you have fought your whole life. Even with the knowledge that God exists. You know that Jesus died on the cross? You have fought your own life. And God have let you live your life and do what you want to do. And it's just dumb. If you be honest. You done missed so much bags, money, health, joy, real peace, real friendships. Because you wasted your time doing nothing. And God has a hatred for slow. And until you get frustrated with slowfulness, you're not going to embrace wisdom. You have to hate slowfulness. You have to hate being slow. If you don't hate your slowfulness, you're entertain it in the future. Saints, what if the woman at the well Six years later, she said, you know, I don't think that the Lord Jesus taken fast enough in my life. I need to go on and uh, I need to go back to getting some water at the well. I need to go back to, you know, picking up this old Flint, Michigan water, this toilet water, this hot dog water. I need to go back to it because, uh, you know, he didn't answer my prayer on time and I need to go back to what I was doing before. Imagine if you read that in the Bible, you would call her stupid. Or Peter, you know, I need to go back to fishing, Jesus. I, I'm not with all this. Take up your cross and follow you. And I need to go back to my fish. I'm going to go fish and I'm going to get my provision where I can see it. All right. I'm not trying to go in no fish mouth and uh, they'll violate the fish. The fish trying to put his mouth on me. I, the, the, the fish done suck my finger and stuff like that. I need, I feel, I'm not doing all of this just to get some money. I'm going to go back to my fishing and do what I was doing before. And that's how I was making my provision. Imagine how stupid you would have said Peter was. You would say, how could Jesus touch them? And then they go back. But you ever had a thought to go back to your old life? It just shows you how you have a dummy inside of you. You need the Holy Spirit. You're not self-sufficient. You need the Holy Spirit. There's a dummy inside of you. There's a part of you that the reasoning just leads you to hell. Saints, do you know that some people think hard about their life and they decide, I want to go to hell? They think hard. They say, oh, let me think about my life. I need to make some life decisions. They say, 
Ah, I want to be burnt up for all eternity. I want my flesh falling off my body. I want to be tormented. Oh, yes. Oh, it's just going to be wonderful. Okay, I'm going to choose my life. Okay, I'm going to live the life that attracts eternal torment. God has a hatred for slow. So he tells them, whoever jumps into the water first, you're going to get healed. You're going to get delivered. Not because you have a need. I'm not going to deliver you because you have an issue. I, I, I'm not going to deliver you because you have something wrong in your life. Not because I can do it. I'm not just going to do it. I need to see how important is this to you? How important is this to you? See, there's something that God was showing here that I need you to show me that you think that my help is important. I don't want to just help you and you be stupid. I want to just invest in you and you don't see the value. I need you to see the importance. Saints, do you really think that those people that got healed in that pool, do you think that they went go live their own life? You think they just jumped and said, hey, I'm going back to how I used to live before. I'm going I'm to operate like that. I just feel like being stupid again. I just feel like, no, in the back of their mind, they knew, oh, snap. I had to, by the grace of God, I was able to activate the quickness I needed to get inside of that pool. And as a result, now I am whole. I need to protect this because it took time for me to get it. I didn't just get it just because of a prayer or just because of a thought. I had to work out my salvation with fear and trembling. I made it my objective to act, to do, to exert my energy. Saints, whatever you don't exert your energy for, you can casualize. That's why you have to work for everything. You have to work for marriage. You have to work for your children. You have to train your children. You, your children just don't grow up to learn to be clean. You got to teach them how to clean themselves. They don't learn how to be respectful just because of I'm a child. No, you have to train. Everything takes training. A preacher doesn't just preach. You have to learn how to proclaim the gospel correctly, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you don't take the time to study, you could take your opinion, your life experiences and mix it with the word and say the word means this. No, the word don't mean that. Just because you experienced something in your life and it didn't work out too good for you don't mean you go inside of the word and say, oh, that's not true. No, it's just you have to take the rightly dividing factor and let it come forth the way, the timing, and the how that God wants it to come forth in. You know how many people interpret the word off of what they opinion, uh, their opinion is? Your opinion is not the accuracy of scriptures. Your opinion even has to be changed. Your opinion is in agreement with Satan until God tutors you aggressively. Aggressive tutoring delivers you from wrong doctrine. Aggressive tutoring sets you free from wrong mindsets. Aggressive tutoring. The intensity of mentorship is what delivers you from tradition. You don't get set free from your mindset all of a sudden. You can grow up in a church. Everybody wear a certain dress code. Everybody say a certain thing. And then when God start talking to you, he got to break through all of that red tape that you got and all of that yellow tape that you got and all that crime scene tape that you got. You think that what God telling you is a crime because he got to break through all of that stuff. Saints, God is all about freshness, urgency, quickness, excellence on it, on point, consecutively, consistently, Continuously, eternally, perpetually. Aggressive.
oppressively, the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent take it by force. The violent take it by force. You can't take it if you just are all looker or an observer or you're a, crit you a critic or you just somebody watching by the wayside. You got to take it by force. You got to take it by force. You got to take it by force. This whole Bible is a revelation of Jesus. But you can't know it until you meet Jesus. He got to show you why the word said what it said. Do you think that the stories in the Bible was just a coincidence or was just something that God wanted you to read? No, there's purpose to it. It's a manual to Emmanuel. 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 You can know who Jesus is right there in the text. All of the scriptures in the Bible, even the stories that you don't understand. They are a revelation of the mysterious person of Jesus. You see all of the facets of God manifested in different aspects. It's in the word of God. Sometimes you won't even know how to operate with a man of God because you haven't even studied the word enough to understand why that man of God is operating like that. You don't know that there was a prophet that did the same thing that your man of God doing. You don't know that there's a prophet that did the same thing, said the same thing, walked the same walk. Everything can be found in scripture. Everything, everything. And saints, here's what God does. Sometimes he gives you an appetizer in stories. It's not the full meal. He'll give you an appetizer of how he thinks. God, look at his way of thinking. He creates a man and lets the woman come from the man. How if you're a man, a woman can come from you, a different gender? But hereby we understand God's order for deliverance. God brings this man first, lets the woman come out of his womb. Because this woman's strength is in her Adam womb. And she can't get birth to anything until she operates from her Adam's womb. Remember what Nicodemus asked King Jesus. Do I have to go back into my mother's womb to be born again? So even Nicodemus was wondering, how do I start giving birth to the plan of God for my life? Do I go back into the womb? But it's a mentality. When God puts a man of God, that man of God is carrying the deliverance to the thoughts, to the words that come from the evil Spirit, the evil kingdom. It's a secret, it's a path to liberty. And God never leaves you alone. He always sends you a helper, not only in the spirit. Yes, the Holy Ghost is a helper, but because you are in a physical world, he'll send you a helper in the natural. You have to recognize who is your helper in the natural. Many people can unlock the messy you. Many people can unlock the disrespectful you. Many people can unlock the inconsistent you, the dishonorable you, the unfocused you, the one that causes yourself to go into your own destruction. But it is a rarity. It is uniqueness when you locate somebody that only wants to quicken you back into the way of God. Quicken you back into the way of the spirit. You don't want to meet people and say, yeah, you can do that. It'll be all right. You know, you just ask for forgiveness. You know, we are not perfect. You don't want to be around those demons because those demons are on their way to hell. And when they are on their way to hell, they're looking for recruits. Do you know that the children of Satan are often better at their membership than children of God? Because children of Satan know how to recruit you to smoke weed. They know how to recruit you to become 
a fool. They know how to recruit you to become disrespectful. They know how to recruit you to become distracted and weak and attract yourself to wrong habits and become a sponge for wrong information. They know how to recruit you. It's rare when someone is pitting your life to recruit you for favor, for the anointing, for personal appointments with God, personal talk, personal quality time with the Holy Spirit. Quality time with the Holy Spirit is rare when someone can become a Holy Spirit relationship towards you. Any man can get your body. Any man can have sex with you. But who feeds your mind? Any woman can have sex with you. But what woman inspires your mind? What woman can cause you to enter into the wisdom of God further? If I want to act foolish around you, it's because you're a fool. If I want to act wise around you, it's because you're wise. <laughs> if I want to be joyful around you, it's because you're joy. If I want to be angry around you because you are angry. What does God want to be around you? King Jesus had different reactions to people's presence. To the Pharisees, he got frustrated. To the Sadducees, he got sad. To the Seraphonician woman, he got impressed. Why I called you a B-I-T-C-H. I called your daughter B-I-T-C-H. And you not like these church women that's always trying to protect their dignity. You still worship me. You see social media all the time. There'll be people talking. So, oh, I, I, oh, they, I, you know, I'm waiting for the right man. The right man not waiting for you, though. Baby, you might be waiting for the right man, but the right man is not waiting for you. You don't ask God for certain things. You become the atmosphere to receive it. You don't ask God for certain things. You become the atmosphere to receive it. If you don't become the atmosphere, you disqualify yourself for it. You don't have to ask God to send you no queen. You don't have to ask God to send you a king. You don't ask, ask, even got to ask God to send you money. Become a Western Union to God. Become the money gram to God. You don't look in the mirror and say, oh, God, I pray that you make me look good today. Oh, Lord, I pray. Hold on. I'm just going to close my eyes. I receive it. You said, if I believe I receive, I shall have it. I receive beauty. I receive good, good, good quality here. All right. Close my eyes. Five more seconds. All right. It didn't happen yet. Five more seconds. They come back again. It's a, it's a switch it in reverse. It, let me see. A little, uh, warrior. Chicken, chicken, Jane, Jane, chicken. No. I'm put this back open. All right, there it is, right there, there it is. Oh, not there yet. Oh, that's bad, right there. I need to fix that corn roll, right there. That corn roll been hanging out. Look like I've been in jail, like I've been in the cemetery with Legion. This, is, I gotta pick this back right here. But God gonna do it for me. He said He'll do all things. You know, that's what He said. That, that's what my auntie told me. That He'll do all things. That he, all things are possible. So this is possible too. I'm gonna close my eyes again. I see that. Oh, that's an ugly right there. Oh, that's. Oh, shoot, my eyebrows. I'm tired of drawing on these eyebrows. The eyebrows look kind of hee-hee-ish. It look like a little hee-hee-ish. Right, let, me, let me metamorphosis. I need, maybe I need to drink some juice inside of my refrigerator so I can do the Eddie Murphy. I want to turn it to Buddy Love. I want to. Hold on, let me try. They marinate for... They marinate for two more times. 
Don't choke on it. Don't choke. Man, man, they, you know what they said. I'm about to get it. Wop. I'm about to get it. Wop. I'm about to get my wop on. All right, about to look up. Man. Maybe I look a little pretty now. Look at it. Oh, I'm still ugly. I'm still. You create beauty. You create beauty. You create beauty in making decisions of what you need. You wash your face. You take a shower. You brush your teeth. You do your hair. You create beauty. See, there's certain sides of what you're believing God for that your job in that particular thing is being left undone. Because you're looking for God to do it. And you create beauty. You create beauty in your life. Praise is comely for the upright. Which shows you that praise is a beauty factor in the spirit. If you want to look beautiful to God, you have to learn how to celebrate God. And if you celebrate God, you'll find that most of the, 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 the wrong things that's in you will leave you. Saints, there are so many people mad at their job. It's not because of your co-worker or the, your enemies there. It's because you haven't celebrated God. You never told him thank you enough for opening the door for you. You never praised him and celebrated him that you had mercy, that you had an opportunity. Saints, the key to your next door is showering King Jesus with gifts for your current door. You ever thought about that? The key to your next door is showering King Jesus with gifts for your current door. That's the key to your next door. If you want to get to somewhere that you want to be, create an atmosphere where God wants to be. Did you just catch what I said? If you want to be where, if you want to get to a place where you want to be, create an atmosphere where God wants to be. Make that possible for God to take deep breaths in your presence without stress and watch how God delivers you from your stress. Create an atmosphere where God is addicted to you and watch how you start receiving all these things that bring you pleasure and excitement. Self-control is the path to holy pleasure. The reason why it's holy pleasure because it's scheduled by the Holy Spirit. When you deny yourself, God supplies yourself. You deny yourself, God supplies yourself. Everything that God commands you to do is to get you out of you. And because God is into you, he trains you to get out of you. And while you're getting out of you, he does things to show you how he's into you. Denying yourself is the qualification to enjoy life. You deny yourself with money. You get to enjoy money forever. You deny yourself with pleasure. You get to enjoy pleasure for the rest of your life. You deny yourself with relationships. God sends the correct, the safe relationships. And learning is more safer and reliable than discerning. Discernment, it cannot be proven oftentimes. Over 99% of the time. Your discernment can't be proven. There's an error in man. Looking at each other. Observing what we observe. You're always wrong most of the time. You can look at a woman and say. Oh she's so perfect. And that's the worst type of woman. You can spend five hours in a woman's presence. And not know who she is. You can spend ten days in a man's presence. And not know who he is. You can work. 
five years for a boss and never know who they are. You can't discern who people are. You cannot discern who people are. You cannot discern who people are. You can look at a man and say, that's a wonderful husband. And that could be the worst type of husband ever. You can look at a woman and say, this is the best type of woman. This woman is so virtuous. She's so awesome. If I had any type of woman, I would pick her. And that's the worst type of woman. You can look at a child and say, oh, they're so angelic. And that's the worst type of child. If you observe with your natural eyes, you'll never have truth. There's so many people that know how to pit on with the natural eyes. And you'll never know who they are. Jesus talked about something real peculiar. He said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. He gave you little hints and, and, and clues to let you discern who people are. You listen to what they say over time. Listen to their level of wisdom. Because the mouth will always expose a fool or expose a genius. The mouth. Your mouth will always expose what's inside of you eventually. Your mouth. So Jesus dealt with the mouth. But there's really no definite. There's really no definite. You won't know who people really are until you surrender all to Jesus. You won't know who people really are until you let Jesus create discipline in you. You will not know who people really are until you make a decision that you're going to follow through with your cross, with your crown, with your plan, the plan of God for you. You will not know who people really are until you make up in your mind that you're not going to be lukewarm. Your decision not to be lukewarm will reveal who people are. When you're on fire for God, it'll reveal who's not. When you're sincere with God, it'll reveal who's not. When you're attentive to God, it'll reveal who's not. It was my attentiveness to the Lord Jesus where I began to discern years ago that people didn't know how to pay attention to God. It was me when I paid attention to God and I would focus and I would sense out how he felt and I would sense out what he didn't like and what he didn't want to hear and what he didn't want to talk about that I begin to discern how people pray about foolishness. It's through you adapting to a divine quality that you start to see who have not adapted. That's how you, that's how you discern. That's how you deserve, but that takes time. That takes time. Everything, everything that you're learning that's supernatural is going to show you who's not operating in it. See, King Jesus was operating in compassion, so he knew that the Pharisees wasn't. You, you see this? He had to operate in that compassion in order to see that the Pharisees wasn't operating in compassion. Now, if Jesus was hard on people like the Pharisees, he would not have discerned that they was not operating in compassion. When his compassion was perfectly demonstrated, then he saw that they wasn't compassionate. Remember when they wanted to stone the woman, when Jesus wanted to give her mercy, he could see that they was unmerciful. Remember when Jesus was doing miracles, when he was doing mighty works, he saw that they was not into miracles. They was not into mighty works. When he wanted to feed the people and the disciples were scrambling to us, so where we going to find food for? Lord, just send them away. And the Lord said, I will not send them away. They must eat unless they faint while they're on their way going home. Because King Jesus was showing the disciples, you don't even have the desire to treat people right. Notice what King Jesus says to Peter. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And all King Jesus kept reiterating, feed, 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 feed. If you love me, make sure somebody else is good. If you love me, make sure somebody else is good. That's the only way you're going to show me that you love me if you make sure somebody else is good. That's the only way. That's the only way. I love God. 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 I read my Bible. I love God. I love God. I love God. I go to church. I love God. 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 Jesus said the only way, Peter, you're going to show me that you love me is feed my sheep. Feed them. That's the only way that I'm going to receive love. That's the only way you're going to be loving on me when I see you feeding my sheep. Feeding. When you take on other people's problem, issue, needs, and it become important to you. It become your focus. It become your desire. 
you start seeking out solutions for other people's life. There was somebody in my life, they had an issue. They had an issue with the government. The government was attacking them. They had owed some things in the government and the government wanted to potentially put them in jail. And I saw their problem. And I thought about it. If I was in a situation I'm facing jail and I don't have money, I will want somebody to have mercy on me. I will want somebody to bail me out of that situation. I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want myself to be going through issues and having all type of issues and then be faced with jail sentence and dot, dot, dot. And so here's what I did. I paid off their whole issue. I paid off their whole situation. I paid off their whole situation. And watch this. I didn't do it for them. You know what? And guess what? It wasn't even a female. The person couldn't have sex with me. The person couldn't do nothing pleasure uh, uh, physically to, to make me feel like I, I got a proper payment. It was a man. It was a man. And I didn't look at the man and say, hey, you know, you jackass, you's a man. Why don't you do, why, why don't you, why don't you? No, 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 because I'm doing it for me. Because when trouble arises, God will remember me. Because what I do for another I schedule it being done for me. What I do for another, I schedule. Now, some of you are, you know what you're going to do? You're going to go help somebody right now that's making dumb decisions. And you're going to say, well, I heard prophet tell me on the line that what you do for other people, he going to do it for you. So I'm going to go ahead and be stupid. I'm going to go ahead and do what I think that I should do. And I'm going to do it like this. And what I do for others, God going to do it back for me. Listen, listen. That comes with instruction. Everything comes with instruction. It doesn't just happen just because, just because, just because. You have to do things off of instruction. God will not bless what he did not instruct. It's a test. And, and saints, it, God didn't have me doing this when I was broke. You understand what I'm saying? God instructs you at the level and the position that you have. You're not Prophet Joshua Holmes. You're not called to preach to the nations right now, right now, like I'm doing. You understand? God wasn't giving me the same instruction when I wasn't called to preach to the nations. Because you're not always called to do what you're created to do. What you're created to do comes in time. Jesus spent 30 years and then he was called to do what he was created to do. It wasn't just immediately. And that's the problem that many people want to do what they're created to do and they're not called to do it yet. Is that the time for it yet? Ruth was not called to Boaz. But she was created for Boaz. She was created for Boaz. So she lived a whole life. She got married. She was getting, uh, let me switch the phrase. There was a duxiness happening for a time. <laughs> she was created for Boaz, but not called to Boaz until the proper time. Think about that. There are things that you're created to, but you're not called to it yet. What makes you patient is that you can wait until you're called to what you're created for. I'm going to say this again. What makes you patient is that you can wait for what you're created. Wait, you can wait to be called to what you are created for. You can wait to be called to. What you're created for. Mary Magdalene was created for Jesus. But she had seven devils when Jesus came out that womb. When Jesus was doing the miracle uh, of the, the wine, the water into wine, she had seven devils. When King Jesus was sitting amongst the Pharisees listening to their debates and their scriptural arguments and their scriptural interpretations, 
she still has seven devils. Mary Magdalene was in a place of seven devils. But guess what? When the appointed time came, she was called to who she was created for. It's all throughout the Bible. Hadassah is living her whole life. She's a young girl, but she's called to an older man. She's called to an older man. She was created for an older man. Imagine. She is living her whole teenage years, her young life, and she's created for a man that was here on earth before she was even born in the natural. And now she's being called to, but watch this, through an opportunity, through an opportunity, through an opportunity. You locate what you're created for through an opportunity. And if you don't seize opportunities in Operate correct in opportunities. You'll never get called to what you're created for. Listen to what I just said. If you don't know how to carry yourself, if you don't know how to act, how to talk, how to think, how to maintain excellence, how to maintain excellence, how to maintain excellence, you'll never be called to what you was created for. There are millions of people on the earth right now that was created to do something, but they're not carrying the qualifications to do it. So they're never being called to what they was created for. They may be created to be somebody in a position and they never adapt to the rules and the laws of that position. So they never get called to what they're created for. If you don't ever quicken yourself with the word of God and deny your flesh and leave your flesh and leave self and leave emotions. If you cater to your feelings for the rest of your life, you'll never be called to what you're created for. Saints, imagine, imagine not only was Joseph called to be the governor over the land. But when he's 17 years old, when he's wearing this coat of many colors, he has to adapt to the right characteristics and qualities so that he can be called to what he's created for. So he goes through all type of things, personal and embarrassment, public embarrassment, public shame. When they introduced Joseph at the jail, they said, this is the one that was sleeping with Potiphar's wife. This is the one that violated his master. This is Joseph. They throw him into jail. Everybody knows his situation. But look what he does. In the jail, he's looking for people to bless. He's looking for people to sow God into. He's looking to be a problem solver. He sees the butler and the baker. They get fired by, by, by Pharaoh or, or their leader. And now he goes and ministers and interprets their dream. He tells them, why are you sad? Because he's carrying the anointing of joy. And in the presence of God is the fullness of joy. So the reason why he has joy is because he stays in the presence of God. That's why he's being called to what he was created for. Because he has the presence of God full time. He refuses to operate in the presence of his emotions. The presence of his accusation. The presence of his fears. The presence of his embarrassment. The presence of his troubles. The presence of his stress. But the presence of God. He operates in the presence of God. And he gets called to what he was created for. Imagine all throughout the Bible. People are getting called to what they was created for. They're, they're created to, to be queens, but they are called to the path of queens. You don't become a queen because you're pretty. You don't become a queen because you look nice. You don't become a queen because you got nice skin, you got nice hair, you got a nice face, you got a nice body, you got nice all that stuff. That's not how you become a queen. You become a queen through discipline. You become a queen through rules. You become a queen by submission. You become a queen by respect. You become a queen by wisdom. The highest level of queenship is wisdom. And wisdom births self-control. And wisdom births the self-control of another in authority over you. You don't just become a king just because you look nice. Because you're handsome. Because you have strength. Because you're strong. Because you can lift weights. Because you got a nice body. You don't become a king just because you like the idea of ruling. You become a king because you learn obedience by the things you suffer. You become a king because you learn sonship. 
You become a king because you walk through the valley of the shadow of death and you fear no evil. You become a king because you carried your cross. You become a king because you're crucified with him. Nevertheless, you live, yet not you live, but Christ liveth in you. And the life that you now live in the flesh is by the faith of the son. Somebody shout. All these different qualities is what you have to learn. You don't become a king just because you want to have dominion. You see, men all the time call themselves kings. How are you a king? You don't even know how to take care of somebody. You don't even have the wisdom to unlock money. You're a king, but you can't even dominate the demons that ruled your father before you came to earth. You can't even dominate over the spirits that kept the generation before you in foolishness and folly. Do you know how to discipline yourself to become? Because self-centeredness, self-centeredness, it hates what you're becoming in God. But unselfishness celebrates what you're becoming in God. Do you know how to aim at becoming? Do you know how to enjoy the path of becoming? Self-centeredness hates what you're becoming in God. But unselfishness, it celebrates what you're becoming in God. Do you know? Do you know how to rejoice in the Lord always? Do you know how to rejoice in the Lord always? Do you know how to rejoice in the Lord always? The Spirit of God not going to make you become something that you don't want to become. But he's going to pit all the weapons and opportunities and devices in your proximity. It's in your area. It's in your location. Saints, the four leprous men had to discern that something that they needed to happen from God was actually in their proximity, in their location. It was around them somewhere. The woman at the well meets Jesus at a well. This well was scheduled for her from the foundation of the world. Now, she was created for Jesus to serve him. But guess what? Now, this well experience is where she's called to. What she was created for. This well experience is where she is called to. What she was created for. She wasn't called to it when she was with those five men. When she was with the third man, she still wasn't called to it. When she was with the second man, she still wasn't called to it. When she was by herself, she wasn't called to it. When she got with the first man, she wasn't called to it. When she got with the fourth man, she, she still wasn't called to it. She got with the fifth man, she still wasn't called to it. And now she's finally called. By the way, don't get Vienna sausage down five times, all right, and waste the circulation, the percolation, huh, the radiation, <laughs> huh, don't, don't waste time and, 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 and come through after you've been used, shoot, because now when God want to use you, you got, you got five people talking to God through you. Jesus said, I want you to go over there. No, I'm not going over there. Hey, Shrek. Shrek, Shrek, get out of here. I'm not going to play with you. I, I'm not, I ain't come here and talk to Bob the Builder. All right, Bob the Builder. I won't hear it, Bob the Builder. I won't hear Popeye the Sailor Man. All right? I don't want to hear Popeye the Sailor Man. You got five different uh, sperm banks operating in you. Saints, I don't think a lot of women understand the spiritual transfer because it's different from men than women. Men can get bound through sex too. But remember, men release their sperm, which is their spirit, their life. Our sperm is our spirit. If our sperm hits <laughs> your egocism, there's a person that comes into your body. We carry people. So what we have, we give to you whether you like it or not. 
So if we're not carrying the Holy Ghost, if somebody carrying the demons, that's what you're going to get, baby. So you got to think about that. You got to think about that. Um, I can't say this enough. Okay. Let's go here. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 32. Look what it says. He that refuses instruction despises his own soul. He that refuseth instruction despises his own soul. You see what that's saying right there? It's telling you that if you don't receive instructions, it's because you hate your own mind, will, and emotions. You don't care about that you're sending it into eternal hell. Saints, instructions is how you show God how much you value him. Huh? Mm. Mercy is how God shows you how much he values you. Mercy and love. Goodness. That's why I said goodness and mercy shall follow me. See, God is actually making it his objective to cause these qualities in him to follow you. Imagine God saying, I'm going to take these two qualities, goodness and mercy, and I'm going to follow you around with it. I'm going to let you make your decision. I'm going to follow you around. And it's only for a time. You don't know when that goodness and mercy is not going to keep on following you. It's not going to keep on following you. Remember, how did David even quote goodness and mercy shall follow me? It's because he's a man after God's own heart. So goodness and mercy not just following him. Goodness and mercy is responding to his pursuit of God. His pursuit of the Lord. Saints, imagine that David had created worship even though he was a king. He still took time to spend time with God. David has all these wives. He got all these soldiers. He got all these responsibilities. And David has time to write songs to God. He has time to sing songs. He has time to meditate on the Lord. He said, my meditation of him shall be sweet. How does David tap into still keeping his regiment with the Holy Ghost? Loving the Holy Ghost. Loving the Spirit of God. He said, teach me to do good for thy spirit is good. How does he find it? How does he find it? How does he find it? Teach me to do good. For your spirit is good. For your spirit is good. For your spirit is good. Imagine David is still finding opportunities. Look, this Psalm 143 verse 10. Psalm 143 verse 10. Before I say Psalm 143 verse 10. Imagine that David never forgot what got him favor. Favor, it is, it is connected to characteristics. Favor is a servant of conduct. Favor is a servant of conduct. It is linked to your decision making, wise decisions. Psalm 143 verse 10. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. For your spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Lead, so up, uprightness, righteousness is a land. So I want you to catch this. Not only is righteousness a land, but righteousness is where you land. See, you can be like a dead fly going around, flying every different location, but Righteousness is where you're in the exact place that God created you to be from the foundation of the world. See, righteousness is so powerful because now you're in the center of where God saw you being before you had a body. 
before you had physical parts, before you had a life on earth. Righteousness is discovering where God created you to be. Right, I'm giving you different de definitions. We know it's the ways of God. Duh. We know it's the ways of God. I'm giving you wisdom doors. Righteousness is discovering where God created you to be. You can't do things God's way until you're where God wanted you to be. Because other things are going to enslave you. Slavery is often connected to the re wrong geography. And if not physical geography, slavery is connected to the geography of the mind. Your mind has to go a wrong place. That's why in the Lord's Prayer, it says, forgive us of our trespasses. Where do you trespass against God in your mind? And then it trickles over to your words and your conduct. Avoid the spirit of misbehavior. 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 The spirit of misbehavior demolishes God's interest in you. The spirit of misbehavior. The spirit of misbehavior, it cancel out God exploring his trust in you. If you're taking notes, write that down. Misbehavior it cancels out God's exploration, his exploring of his trust in you. Saints, here's the beautiful thing about your life. King Jesus is constantly looking at how he can trust you. An instruction that he gives you, a leader that he gives you, is him seeking out a methodology for him to trust you. When he tells you to sow a seed, Give your money to your man of God. He's seeking out how he can trust you. When God tells you to forgive, he's seeking out how he can trust you. When God tells you to read the word of God, to meditate scriptures, he's seeking out how he can trust you. When the Lord tells you to praise more and give thanks more, he's seeking out how he can trust you. The Holy Spirit is constantly pitting things in your bosom, in your possession, in your presence, so that it can increase his trust level towards you. Because when God gives you a task, he gives you a task, it's because it is his desire to see you last. He don't want you to be temporal. That's why he gives you a task. It shows you his passion for you to last. That's why he gives you a task. He gives you a task because he's saying, as long as you do this, I'm going to flow my power through you. I'm going to flow my power through this instruction. Jonah's power was hidden. His next anointing was hidden in Nineveh. His next anointing was hidden in Nineveh. Vashti's next level of favor was hidden in the king's instruction to come show herself. And she missed it. Vashti missed her anointing. She missed her anointing. It was in the instruction to come show herself. Everything that God wants to give you, he gives it to you through making a command towards you. He has to command you before he can caress you. I remember there was a guy telling me, you like, you taking the people money, you taking the people money. I said, be careful, I take your money too. <laughs> and guess what? He ended up sowing $5, like five weeks later. <laughs> now with $5, all, all I could buy was a fruit punch. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm, up, I'm up at a gas station with a fruit punch. A fruit punch and some chiwis. A fruit punch and some chiwis. A fruit punch and some chiwis. So five dollars. <laughs> I remember. I remember recently somebody sold five hundred dollars to me. They said I don't even like you. Here. Well, I don't like you either, but I like this five hundred. I do. I do. So, so we we in agreement. 
I don't like you. You don't like me. But I like this 500. I know you like the 500 too because you're mad. So we in agreement. And that's doing business with you. Saints, have you ever thought that when you do business with God, God may have Satan himself do business with you? And that's why you got to be wise as a serpent. You know what I'm saying? If uh, if uh, if you, <laughs> you know, you don't like me, I don't like you either. But I like this $500 bill, you know what I'm saying? And saints, people try to act like money don't make you happy. It'd it, it, it be the religious people, but they always begging. Religious people always act like, oh, Jesus, 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 Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Even Jesus doesn't close his window. He not up there impressed because you can say Jesus uh, 90, per, 90 times per second. He not, he not, he not scared of that. That ain't moving him. They ain't moving him. You know what I'm saying? And, and, but, but they the biggest beggars. And saints, and then it be messed up when religious people, right? They be up there talking about, oh, we don't need this and we don't need this and we don't need this. But then they be up there having the little children selling bean pies on Saturday. <laughs> and, 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 and walking and knocking on your door, talking, so, would you like to buy some cookies? Now, I don't want no milk and cookies. Go tell the pastor that they don't want to hear about no prosperity. I ain't giving you no milk and cookies. Go tell the pastor. God, I know it's not you that came here, baby. I know it's not you. Don't cry. Don't cry. <laughs> don't cry, baby. Don't cry, baby. It's okay, baby. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You, you want some Cheeto puffs? I got some puffs in the back. Come on. Come on. I'm not. Come on. You want some Cheeto puffs? Come on. Come on. We got some ribs from yesterday, like Kodak Black. <laughs> we got some ribs in the back. We got a, we got some ribs in the back. Hold on, baby. Come on, come on in it. Don't cry. Don't cry, baby. Don't cry. Don't cry. Don't cry. Don't cry, baby. It's not you. Is it God gonna make a way? God gonna make a way. No, no, he not. No, he not. But God gonna make a way. I'm just I'm just trying to soothe you down. They send the little children out. But they don't want to hear about no money. Little children be up there. Can we wash your car for for ten dollars? We won't wash your car for no. Go tell the pastor that he can't. Tell the pastor that I said <laughs> the child be looking at you like how you know that it was the pastor. That's because that's exactly what happened. Go tell the pastor. Go tell the pastor a second cathedral, episcopal, dustiness facility that we are not going to be having you clean no car for no $10. Go tell the preacher that he ain't want to hear about no prosperity. He said it wasn't from God. Saints, let me tell you something. Your prosperity is connected to how you view mountains. Your prosperity is connected to how you view mountains. Because when God sends a prophet to you, there'll be mountains standing in the way so that you can't see the prophet. Saints, Satan will set up mountains in front of your face so that you can't see your prophet. He'll magnify those mountains. Even the mountain of offense, the, the mountain of disrespect, the mountain of uh, inconsistency, the mountain of of worry, the mountain of all those different things, it stops you from prosperity. Think about this. And if you say to the mountain, be thou removed, you get it out the way. Elisha and Elijah will flow in perfect harmony together. King Ahasuerus and Esther flow in perfect harmony together. David and Jonathan so they, they, they're flowing in perfect harmony together. You notice that David and Jonathan, they have no arguments, no debates. You never hear Jonathan go to David and say, you must have caused this on yourself. What did you do to make my father hate you? Why did you provoke my father to hate you? You never see Jonathan one time ever judge David 
because Jonathan has been infected with the virus called supernatural honor. Ah, huh? you hear what I said? Jonathan has a virus that's inside of his soul from God called honor and it's eating him up. He can't let his dad kill David because he's so full of honor. He can't let his dad slander David because he's so full of honor. Honor is more powerful than genetics. That's why Jonathan can betray his biological dad to protect a man that he didn't even meet when he was born. He just met this man. So, so kerede make it korata karama karata karama. Lebrosto poro robo korete kete. You notice that Jonathan, he just meets this man, but he's more loyal to this man than his own biological father. Because honor is greater than genetics, is greater than natural bloodline, is greater than naturality, flesh and blood. Saints, the blood is thicker than water. That blood of Jesus is thicker than any other liquid that you'll know. The liquid of false friendships, the liquid of false family, the liquid of false partners, and the liquid of false friends. The blood, the blood. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How long have I been preaching on here? The blood! Come on, let pull money coming to me now. The blood. It's the blood that gives you strength. It's the blood that gives you strength from day to day. It'll never lose its power. I said it'll never lose its power. You gonna operate in the blood of Jesus in your life all this week. You gonna release the blood. You gonna talk the blood. You gonna say the blood. You gonna receive the blood. You gonna invite the blood. You gonna plant the blood. You gonna sow the blood. You gonna decree the blood. Establish the blood all this week. You gonna be bloody all this week. The blood never lost its power. Blood week. Blood week. I declare. I declare this blood week. This blood week. All this week is blood week. We gonna see what the blood of Jesus does for your mind this week. I plant the blood of Jesus to flow in my mind right now, purging my conscience from dead works. I refuse to worry, stress out, or have any anxiety attacks. I put the blood throughout my being. I put the blood throughout my being. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. And watch this. This week, I'm going to have communion service on this line. This week. I'm going to take communion with you on this line. We all going to do it. Yes. Yes. You going to remember the body of Jesus that was broken for you. So that you ain't got to be broke or broken ever again in your life. Two realms. Broke and broken. We taking communion on this line this week. This blood week. That's what the Holy Ghost said. This blood week. We take.
taking communion. We're going to remember the body of Jesus this week. And we're going to remember the blood of Jesus this week. We're going to remember and do this in remembrance of him. All this week. We're going to operate in this blood. And you're going to get delivered from them demons. And every demon that want to attack you. Going to feel this blood this week. Enough with natural weapons. We moving with blood. I came from an old, old traditional law of speaking the blood and decreeing the word. I'll never forget because God be reminding me when I was walking one night because there was this situation. I had to go somewhere and somebody had called me here that was connected to son and I had to walk. To get there. And it was nighttime. I'll never forget. When I got up to halfway up the street, it was completely dark and I sensed evil. Meanwhile, the night before, I had a dream where I, all that was magnified in a dream, I saw a man in a pickup truck carrying a pistol, a silver pistol. And that night I was troubled when I woke up because I, I knew that this was something that was going to happen. But I was wondering, why is he holding the pistol? And why is he right in front of my door holding the pistol? In 24 hours, I'm walking and I sense evil come upon me very strong. It's like the world stops and you feel evil. You sense death. You can feel when which kingdom is manifesting. I'll never forget when the guy came driving up in a pickup truck and the first thing that hit my mind this is the dream the guy pulls up in front of me cuts me off so I can't walk he pulls out from his left hand and he pulls out like this I see the silver pistol that I saw in the dream the first thing as I stand before the presence of God was the spirit of God took over my mouth. I couldn't tell him don't shoot. I couldn't tell him stop. What you doing? I couldn't tell him nothing. The spirit of God spoke through me. How I knew because I didn't have no ability. You freeze in those moments. I said no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And the God drove off. His truck screeching. Pulled off. And I looked. I said, I can't believe this just happened to me. I told my mother. My mother told me, remember, you had the dream last night. Now you see what that dream was. When I had that experience, I understood how powerful the word of God was for real. Let me tell you something. Don't let nothing happen in your life that convince you that this word ain't powerful. You'll speak your word over situations sometimes and it look like the situation don't change. Don't let time dictate your confidence in this word of God. Because that's what Satan used to weary you and make you believe that the word not true. Time. That's why I said, if you let patience have her perfect work, you'll be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Don't let the devil trick you into time and get you into this time debate because then you'll lose the, the supernaturality of this word of God. It works. And God gave you the word so that you could, you could have the privilege of releasing it into a situation and seeing his marvelous presence bring change. His presence bring protection and deliverance. Saints, do you know that God will permit problems in your life? The, he'll permit the abundance of problems so that you can experience the abundance of his power. The abundance of infirmity so that you can experience the abundance of his divinity. The abundance of issues so that you can experience the abundance of his missiles. How his weapons are mighty. They are pulling down strongholds. 
wherever Satan has a stronghold against you, he got the weapon to tear down. As long as you stick with the weapon, everything got to come tumbling down. Just stick with the weapon. See, it's stuff like that that created my confidence in the word of God. I remember being in a van after I had prayed hours. And then I went into my decreeing session. I started decreeing, I shall receive provision today. I walk in miracle provision. Miracle provision is manifesting around me. God will always send a prophet to, to teach you how to do this. He'll always send a prophet. And I was just in my decree and session and I was speaking things that I wanted to happen in the now. I said right now, miracle favor is happening for me. There's people that I'm meeting that are blessing me. There's doors that I'm walking through. I receive God's path for my life. I'm making decisions that's unlocking my provision, unlocking the favor of God right now. I'm doing it. I'm, I'm walking in miracle favor. I'm meeting people that are showing kindness towards me and I'm decreeing all type of things. And I get out of the van underneath the power of the spirit and I don't talk to nobody. I don't talk to nobody. I'm zoomed in. I start walking up the street. There was a yard full of beautiful green grass, just beautiful. And I heard the spirit of God whisper to me, look over in that left, 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 left grass. Go, go look over in that left grass. And I see money on the grass. I'm shocked. I'm thinking I'm in a vision, but then I realized, no, this is an actual house. This is an actual. Then I had thoughts in my mind. Well, maybe this money belonged to somebody. The spirit of God said, go get the money. <laughs> he said, or oh, Psalm 23 say, he making you to lie down in green pastures. He making you to lie down in that grass, that green pasture. He said, go get the money. I picked the money up. I'm on my way. I'm on route to the store. I'm on route to the store. See, I feel the anointing going through my arms right now as I'm talking. The anointing just hit me because there's miracles going to happen to you like this. As I stand as a man and a prophet of God, as a king of God, where the word of a king is, there's power. I just felt heavy weight of God's glory just hit my arm, hit my hands. Because the, as I'm talking about this, the spirit of God listening and he love it. The spirit of God love when you talk about what he did for you. So that people can understand how real it is. That it's, it's not far from them. It's right there. It's right here in your presence. So I'm on my way to go to the store. And mind you, I'm sewing. I'm sewing. I've had many of times thinking about telling you all to transition your seed to go into the P.O. box and sowing via mail. I've had thoughts of that sometimes because I, 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 I know that's how I started off, but we're not doing that. Stick with push pay, stick with text by give and all that other stuff. We're not doing that. And those of you are that sow by mail, keep on sowing by mail. Cause I, I, I like everybody that, that have that, their particular way, that specific way of sowing. Stick with all of me, but I'm saying I've had thoughts because I know how real the seed is. So I'm sowing in this time. I'm decreeing. I, I walk up the street. I look over in this green grass. I see money in the grass. The Lord said, take it. Now, mind you, I was decreeing that I have miracle favor with people, strangers, saints. I'm walking up the street. These four booger wolves looking over ladies. These was golden girls. These were silver girls. They weren't golden. They were silver girls. Silver girls. Uh, pawn jeweler, pawn, pawn. I'm walking up the street and, and the silver girls, I hear some woman crying out from the back. I ain't know if I was on Lion King. I ain't know if my Mufasa was coming. Uh, um, <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know what was happening up in there, up in there. I didn't know what was happening. And 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 uh, let me just give you this wisdom, though. Joy lets you see how stupid your angry decisions was. Joy lets you see how stupid your angry decisions were. 
So these silver girls came and they have. And, and so I, I stopped. So these four ladies in the car, they said, we just came from a revival. And they said, we told the Lord, the, the next person that we meet, we will bless them. Show us the next person that we meet. So they was driving around. And God had, he stirred me. I was, I was in my decreeing session, but I went up in the power of the spirit. When I say this, I don't mean no mythological, or I'm, I'm walking on the air. Ooh. And I'm gliding with some heels on like Prince. <laughs> and I'm gliding with some, and the music in the back. Ooh. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a normal person. A normal body rather coming out, but you're in a zone mentally. That's what I'm talking about. The power of the spirit. Remember, he said, I give you a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. The spirit of power. When Jesus returned in the power of the spirit, that means that the mentality is not underneath any demonic suggestions. I'm, 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 I'm showing you something. And you're learning something off of this. It means that the mind is not underneath any demonic thoughts, and any demonic emotions, any demonic suggestions, any temptations. It means that you're fully engrafted into God's concentration. He's your focus. He's your priority. And there's nothing moving you to the left or to the right. You're fully engrafted in. You're fully one. That's what it means to go in the power of the spirit. You see what I'm saying? So it don't mean a ooh. I'm in the power of the spirit. Ooh, they can't touch me. Ooh, you can't see my feet. Ooh, you can just see my ankle socks. Ooh, you can see my ankle bracelet. Ooh. <laughs> Saints, that wouldn't work for some of y'all because your children will pull you down. Mama, 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 where, 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 where's the cookies? Mama. I'm in my spiritual experience. Don't call me. Don't call. Get back. Get back. Get off, get off of me. Get off of me. Get off, get off of my. Get off my feet. Get off my feet. Saints, the best slap happened in church. The best slap happened in church. Up there. And, and they get you real good. Your, your, your crush be right there. Now you like this girl right there. And you up there say something. Pow! And then you heard it. You hear it. And you try to hide it. But, but it is, it is silent right there. And you try to laugh it off. But the laugh just gets you another slap. <laughs> so, so, so. And they turn around laughing, so I don't care. I don't care. And then your mama come out with some Taekwondo up. Hey, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. And then they don't even want you to say all right. Don't tell me no all right. Don't, don't tell me. <laughs> don't cry, don't cry. Say sometimes you want action, but Nick, Nick, what, what you want me to do then? <laughs> this hurt. You see how heavy your hands is? Huh? What, what, what I'm supposed to do? You, you, you don't see you got bare hands. You done carry water gallons. You done carried watermelons. <laughs> you done carried water jugs. You don't carry it all type of stuff. Your hands is strong. <laughs> Shoot. Praise God. So these ladies ended up blessing me. Sowing money into me. Feeding me. And here I am walking in miracle favor with somebody I never met before. But I had spoke that. I decreed that into existence. I spoke that into existence. 
And saints, I came home with so much food, I didn't have enough. I didn't have enough room for all that food. I had so much provision and I had so much money, but I had sold and I had spoke the word and I had decreed it into existence. I had called forth the power and the presence of God. I had released my decree into the atmosphere and the angels are responsible to go forth and minister for you. Saints, you got to understand this life. Sowing is the superior lifestyle. Sowing is the superior lifestyle. If you want to experience the miracles of King Jesus in this life, you got to learn how to give him seed. You got to let that seed multiply in his hands. And the spirit of God, when he's training you to sow, he'll even double back and let you know, no, you shouldn't have sowed that. There was a better seed that I wanted you to sow. I want you to listen to me. I want you to follow instructions because I want to bring something to your life. And it's going to come by you listening exactly to the instructions I give you. Saints, and I, I operated in that for some time. I told you how while I was fasting, I would dry fast. I would Eat or drink nothing. Saints, that's why I often mock people when they talk about, you know, they, they're on a Daniel fast and they're talking about they're eating salad and stuff. Now you know why I mock people like that. I mock, I mock that idea because Daniel never did a fast like that. But I also understand through wisdom that this is what people are hearing. They're untaught. They misunderstand the scriptures. Daniel never went on a fast like that. When people really fasted, the real fast is that you don't eat or drink nothing. What you drinking water for? You're not trying to sustain yourself. You see what I'm saying? You ending up into the hands of Jesus. You're not trying to pick part of yourself. You understand? So how I fat, how I fasted like that. I was on dry fast and all that stuff. And then the spirit of God started showing me about wealth and prosperity. See, that's why I have such a passion about this. I'm, I, I want to get financial testimony to you. I want you to understand how real this is. Because it'll be selfish for me to find the way to all of the good donuts and all of the good mangoes and all of the good grapes and all of the great good bananas and all of the good watermelons and cantaloupes and all of the good food. And I withhold all of the secrets to it and let you go eat expired bananas and expired mangoes that's not sweet and expired watermelon that's hard and it don't have no type of... A, a good taste to it. It will be wrong. So saints, that's why I'm telling you what I do. What I what I do when I'm driving in a vehicle is for my enjoyment. It's not to win nobody to the Lord, but I still be winning people to the Lord because when they come talk to me, I get to tell them about Jesus. And I get to tell them about his goodness and how much. I remember seeing a young man. It was a young young man. And he, 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 he was broken down. And I helped him. And God had me minister to him. And you know what he asked me? He said, how do you got all this nice stuff? I told him, I said, Jesus gave all of this stuff to me. I told him, Jesus love you. And he want to do it. He said, well, how could Jesus give all this stuff to me? I would like to have... And it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. Oh, no, you shouldn't tell people that. Uh, then they're going to see God as somebody that just gives stuff to them. Uh, what you want them to see, like, duh. You don't want people to understand that God gives good stuff to them. Or so you want them to believe that Satan gives good stuff to them. Oh, I don't, I don't You don't want people to believe that. You don't want people to look at God like that. Jesus came and said, if you evil parents know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more would the father give? If you ask for a fish, he's not going to give you a scorpion. King Jesus started talking about the comparison. You evil, you ain't even got the Holy Ghost. And you want to make sure your children are good. And you think that God not thinking. Let, let me tell you something. Here's why I want you to meditate on all this week. 
is that the Holy Spirit is thinking about how he can take good care of me. I want you to meditate on that this week. I want you to think about that. The Holy Spirit is thinking about how he can take good care of me. The Holy Spirit is thinking about how he could take good care of me. He's thinking about it. So my seeking of God is to find out wisdom and understanding on how to let him do it. How to put myself in position. Lord, let me not become lazy to make a decision you want me to make. Let me not get fearful and anxious and intimidated not to do something you want me to do. Let me not get distracted from the schedule you have for me in the spirit. Let me not get distracted. Well, God, will God tell me to quit my job and seek him more? Baby, 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 baby. If you can't seek God with a job, you're not going to be able to seek God without a job. You know why? Because you're not going to be focused when you're hungry, you're thirsty, and you want to eat, you want to drink, and you ain't got no money. You're not going to be able to focus when you're living with somebody that hates your God, but you subject to live with them because you ain't got nowhere to stay. You're not going to be able to seek God when you're in a homeless shelter and you don't know who's going to steal the apple juice that you stole from about five people and they didn't find you yet. You're not going to be able to seek God when you got sickness in your body because you got to eat foods and you got to endure different type of things because you ain't got the money to keep your health. Saints, let me tell you this. If you can't seek God while you got an opportunity, what makes you think you're going to be able to seek God when you ain't got no opportunity? <laughs> your job ain't your enemy, baby. Your job, listen, your job actually empowering you to seek God. Because you're going to need to get seed. How are you going to activate seed? Saints, you know, I pray. And I have prayed. But I learned that the activation of real prayer the activation of pure prayer has some type of sowing in it. Why would I want to come to God about something I want him to fix and not fix something that brings him pleasure? Why wouldn't I fix a void that he has to be worshipped? Why wouldn't I fix a desire that God has to be sold into? So it would be crazy for me to magnify God fix this for me. And I don't want to fix his problems, but I want him to fix my problems. That's why the seed is so powerful, because I'm telling the Lord, let me fix what's bothering you so that you could be allowed to fix what's bothering me. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Go all oh, praise God. Oh, praise God. Oh, praise God. When you think about it, how the Lord gives you a weapon where you tell the Lord, I want to fix what makes you unhappy so that you can have the entrance to fix what makes me unhappy. I want to bring joy where you have experienced sorrow. So Lord, now I open up the door so the King of glory can come in. The Lord strong and mighty in battle so you can come in and fix what's bringing me depression and sorrow and you can bring joy. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. 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 Imagine how the spirit of God begins to react to what's bringing you discomfort. When you say, Lord, I want to create your comfort. I want to create your happiness. I want to bring to you something that you love so that you can bring to me something that I love. This is your love relationship with the Holy Spirit. This is how powerful it is. This is how powerful it is. This is why you could take it to the bank that whatever you name a seed, God will bring it to you. Especially if you sow in the seed that God wants you to sow. Especially if you're giving in the spirit that God wants you to give. You're guaranteed to receive what God has the power to bring. You're guaranteed to receive it. Oh, hallelujah. 
Oh, glory to God. Saints, I used the seed when I was working at a call group. And I went into a, uh, I went into a, uh, I want to say like a stupor. I went into like a stagnation because I realized that for some reason, my sales had begun to drop. I, 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 I realized that I was struggling in doing what, what everybody, and I had just came on job. I was, I, I started thinking hard cause I love excellence. I love, I love production. I love I love to 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 operate in 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 getting results and and dominating. So so in the mind I said I said no 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 this got to stop here. Oh no 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 no. So I took my seed. I sold my seed. I named my seed. I named my seed. I named my seed. I named my seed. And I, I positioned my seed. And when I named it, I picked the seed to target that people would call and that they would begin to buy the product from me. I, I begin to call people in and watch this here. I had got so angry. That's why anger is the energy to discover change. Anger is the the passion to discover the results that I position for you. So I begin to look with anger and watch this here. We went on lunch break. I wouldn't even go on lunch. I wouldn't eat nothing. You know what I would do? I started decreeing stuff. I started speaking stuff. I started getting angry at my situation. Now, let me say this here. I started speaking and calling in and I didn't call in with anxiety and anger and I didn't call in with, with frustration towards God. I called in with violent faith. I called in with persuasion. I was fully persuaded. I wasn't guessing. I wasn't wondering. I wasn't experimenting. I knew that my word was going to activate what needed to be done. But then I started realizing something. There's a strategy. There's a strategy. There's a strategy. So the seed would make you aware of results that you haven't taken a hold of, but it's in your decision making. So I started seeing the strategy. Okay, there's a way that I must talk. There's a way that I must pronounce my words. There's a way that I must be convincing. There's a way that I must create faith in the product. There's a way that I must create desire for the product. And all these downloads started coming to me because it's the spirit of God suggesting things. See, whenever you ask God for help and you pray, he going to put pictures in your mind when you pray in the spirit. When you pray in the spirit, God going to show you Yourself doing things and saying things that's going to bring solutions to issues. So I started seeing the strategy. So I started moving in the strategy. My sales went from the lowest amongst all of the workers to being celebrated in the gold. That even my bosses knew that I was the top worker now. And this happened in just 24 hours. In 24 hours, my, my sales skyrocketed. I broke records in the office. And guess what? I wasn't even there for a long time. I wasn't going to be there for a long time. But this was my assignment from God to get seed into my hand. And I invested my all into this moment. I worked at this job like it was ministry, like it was what God created me to do and, and do this alone. I did this job like it was no other job that was ever going to be given to me. I did this job like the throne of God was right in front of me and the father was staring at me face to face. I gave my all to this job because the Holy Spirit looks at how do you treat situations. Are you treating a situation saying, I'm just going to do this for now because I'm waiting for something better to come? That's not the attitude for promotion. You give your all to every situation. You give your all to every relationship. You give your all to every instruction, every task. Why do you think that some things don't work with people? Because they don't give their all to it. They give half of their self. There's rules for everything. There's laws for everything. There's rules and laws for everything. If you're a child, the rule is you have to learn how to invest all of your attentiveness into your parents. 
That's the rule for being a child. The rule for being a child, you got to learn to invest your all into your parents. The rule for driving on the streets, you got to study the, 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 the speed limit signs. You got to study the speed limit signs. You got to study when it says stop. You got to study where it says yield. You got to study where it says 48 miles per hour. You got to study and you got to make a decision. God not going to do it for you. You got to make a decision to say, I'm going to follow this. Now, saints, I want to say this to you. And, and there's rules for everything. Some of you all may never hear this. But this your daddy talking. There's rules. And some of you all, you don't need to hear this because you already understand this. There's rules to having sex. There's rules to having sex. And some of you all will need to know this. You, you, the rule for having sex is you have to clean yourself before having sex. You have to take a shower before having sex. Now, there's some of you are on here, you say, well, 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 prophet, I'll just get it in. Well, go on, do your business. Just... But you know what God told me? Look at the cars. When you buy a new car, they don't give you that car dusty. They don't give you that car with dirt. They, they, they take the car, they wash it. They wash the car. They present it to you. I know. I have. I have. I have. I have a. Uh, I have. Yeah. Yeah. And they give it to you clean. So that you can drive it. <laughs> they give it to you so you can drive it. And see this generation. This generation. I fear for the young people. Because the young people, they don't know about cleaning their self before having sex. And they don't know how to clean their self after they have sex. They smell like sex. You ever walk throughout the mall? You ever walk through uh, uh, um, uh, uh, somewhere and you s people smell like sex? They don't know how to clean their ass. I mean, they don't know how to clean They ass. <laughs> Learn to clean. If you a man, clean yourself. Clean yourself. If you a man, clean yourself. Let that woman get the best experience out of you. If you're a woman, clean yourself. Let that man get the best experience out of you. Some people don't even know how to have sex. You're supposed to clean yourself before you have sex. You're supposed to clean yourself. Now, you might fall asleep. <laughs> now, that's the exception. <laughs> that ain't nothing wrong with that. I'm talking about. This your daddy talking. Some of this stuff don't apply to you now. I'm talking about in your future. I'm giving you wisdom for life. Let your spouse get the best out of you. Use a man. Let that wife get the best out of you. And prepare yourself sexually. No, this just wisdom for life. Don't think about scriptures when it's time to have sex. And don't do a Bible study because it's going to decrease your sexual flow. You start meditating on scriptures. You think about the Bible. You can't have sex because there's something dominating your mind. To have sex, you have to think about sex. And there's an anointing of sex that makes you think about sex so that the sex will be right. Think about your partner. Imagine them, your spouse. No, I'm, I'm just giving you laws for this. For the future. For the future.
See, this is wisdom. This is love, dad. You got to know these things. You got to know these things. Because sometimes even your parents, they may not have felt comfortable to talk to you about this. You understand? It don't mean that they are bad parents. They may not have never felt comfortable talking to you about this, or it's probably not something that uh, they 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 felt led to do, which is fine. Your man of God will come and tell you. Clean yourself, cause that's gonna be the best you, the best experience. Now, some of you are gonna be dumb as hell. You know how you gonna be dumb as hell. You gonna sit right here talking some? Well, I got that good, good. I got that. I got that. Uh, baby, baby, I we we ain't talking about what you got. I said clean what you got. I you sit. I'm not talking. Listen, I ain't, I ain't want hear nothing. I don't want hear nothing. Well, well, listen. You know, I'm I'm, I'm daddy. I, I do what I do. You know, I. I I know I, I'm, I, I got mine, so I don't need you to tell me, Prophet. I know what I'm doing. I know how to move. I know how I, I, I know how to do. It. I know how everything. Yeah, so I don't, I don't need this. I... They ain't got nothing to do with that, brother. They ain't got nothing to do with that, sir. Huh? Clean you, sir. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> you call that? You call? That, you, you hear me knocking? Huh? I said, did you hear me knocking? <laughs> Ain't got nothing to do with it, sir. Clean you, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Keep yourself at the highest level of excellency. Because excellence always brings favor. It always subdues favor. Even the favor with the person that you're supposed to impress. Now, saints, let me just say this. This is wisdom because some of y'all didn't know this. Some of you all do know this. But let me tell you something. Here's what I found out. God doesn't tell you what you know with no purpose. Sometimes he's applauding you, the fact that you know. Sometimes he's applauding you that your mind is blessed with the knowledge. Sometimes he's telling you to salute you on the proper rules flowing through your life. You got to follow rules. Everything take rules. Be your best in everything. As a man, you keep yourself. Keep your hygiene. Keep, keep yourself and feel good about yourself. You don't need your hair like another man. You don't need your strength like another man. You don't need your body like another man. The way that God put you in your body, dominate in that body. God gave you that body as a man. Walk in that body with confidence. Same thing. You don't need another body of a woman. You don't need to look like another woman. Your significance. God look at you and say. I love, I love the way that you are. I love the way that you are. I love that weight that you're gaining. I love how you. God. There's some people. God loved them. And God loved them. He want them that size. He want, he want that man to look like that. That's how he want to present you. The image of God. The image of God. The image of God. He loves looking at you the way that you are. Ele voco rande de vosia. Rande de vande de vosianda ravaya. Rande de mando ravoco. Repe sete pere de ya. Rande de vosianda rava. He enjoyed the way that it is. Your facial structure. Don't get no plastic surgery, baby. All the people that get plastic surgery start looking like ducks when they finish. The other day, just, ooh, ooh, baby, who you, who you, who baby, baby. No, no, you don't look the same. No, I don't want no kiss. No, I don't want no kiss from you. No, I don't know if that's stroke or that's gonorrhea kicking in. I, <laughs> I didn't finish sex school. They didn't tell me everything, the consequences for having it. I don't know. Maybe that's a symptom that they didn't tell us about. Duck mouth. <laughs> Ooh, I just, I just love him. And, well, I don't love you no more. Yeah. I, well, you don't love me for who I am, my appearance. Yeah, yeah, your appearance matters too. 
Loving you requires your appearance too. And I don't want to see it. Don't get plastic surgery, y'all. A plastic surgery would deceive you. Have you up there telling, oh, I look so good. Ooh, it is. Next minute. Hey, hey, Kool-Aid. You look like an alien that came from the UFO. What? Why are you all the way up in there like that? What you excited for? Like, I ain't even buy you no present, man. I'm just trying to watch a movie. What you want from me? Hey, bruh, your eyebrows, it look like you, 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 you got some infection right there. What's going on there? You good? Yeah, your eyes all the way up like that, like Yao Ming. <laughs> you got them Yao Ming eyes. What's happening there? Well, I just had some Botox. I just had some Botox. What? Botox? Botox? You look like Bo Jackson. That's, <laughs> this <laughs> This is not what I signed up for. I'm not having it. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to sleep with you or none of that. No, you, your face, faces matter. That's the faces matter. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do no ro protests, no roast tests or none of that. Since I'm going to tell you like this here. Texas got some ribs that 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 they'll substitute marriage. They'll substitute marriage. <laughs> they'll substitute a lot of things. They got some ribs. They got some barbecue ribs, and 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 they got some yams and and, and, and collard greens, and and and, and they substitute. They substitute. They substitute. Dear son, be careful when you walk into. A, 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 a woman's personal place. You might see something into. Well, this is a deal. This is a deal. Uh, deal, no deal. I'm not. I'm. I'm out of here. Like, what is this here? What? What is this? <laughs> this is a. Baby, I'm coming out in just a minute. All right, take your time. Take your time. Take your time. This is. This is a description. Oh, oh, oh! What? What? Nah, I ain't. Nah, I I probably I probably eat something from Chick Fil A. I probably eat something from Chick Fil A. That's what. I eat something from Chick Fil A. Well, baby, why you smell like that? What you put on? Listen, I won't ask you why you smell like that. Well, let first of all, let's go Chick Fil A. And uh. As men, we have an anointing to keep our hygiene. As men, we have an anointing. When you're a man, God will give you ideas to keep that kingly aura on you. That kingly aura is so important. Because how you feel about yourself is going to determine how your kingship is demonstrated. Is going, to, is going to decide how your kingship is demonstrated. You want to give the proper demonstration of your kingship. It's therapeutic for your mind to smell yourself smelling good as a man. It does something for you. You don't have to even do it for nobody else. It does something for you. When you are feeling good about you, it does something for you. It does something for you. You gotta smell your you you gotta smell yourself smelling like heaven to even walk in heavenly thoughts. Sometimes it does something for you. It does something for you. It releases your kingship when you have the right fragrance. Just being able to smell something good does something to your mind. It it releases your mind into. A, Openness for wisdom. It causes your mind to start reaching for what brings God joy. That's how powerful it is. Because you feel when you feel good about yourself, 
you want to make God keep on feeling good more and more. When you feel good about yourself. When you feel good about yourself, you become a blessing to God, a reward to God. Take care of yourself. Go to the highest esteem. Listen, I don't care if you're mad at me. I don't care. I'm talking to somebody's spirit. I don't care if you're mad at me. Nobody ever told you that you need to clean yourself. Nobody ever told you that. As a man, most times you don't have men that can tell you to clean yourself. Men don't be telling each other. Most men don't know how to tell another man. Uh, even men, sometimes, you know, yeah, they can teach their son how to take shower and baths and stuff. But they, they, they're really more that macho, oh, you know, you got to be a man. You got to punch. You got to punch. And if somebody fights you, a man will teach his child how to fight faster than he teaches his child how to be enjoyable for a woman. I disconnect from people. You know why? Because I create fun for people. So if I create fun for you and you still a jackass, I disconnect from you. If I create your fun and you're a jackass, I treat you where jackasses go. That's how I make decisions. I create fun for people. So you... You have to learn how to be a fun giver and find the funness in yourself where people could enjoy that same funness. A part of that is hygiene, keeping yourself, keeping yourself on top. Saints, look at my hair. Look at my hair, right? Right? Okay? Look. All right, stuff. It's a part of spiritually staying fresh with God because spiritually your decision to keep your outside it will trickle back over to your inside and you'll say, okay, let me keep myself with God too. It'll speak to you. Your outside will speak to your inside and say, how about I take the initiative to use this quality for my walk with God? Your joy exposes how well you're walking with God. Your joy. If you want to know if you're spiritually dominating, examine your joy. If you want to know if you have drifted from God, look at your joy. Your joy will prophetically explain your dominion or your slavery. Think about that. Your joy will prophetically explain. It will prophetically explain. Your dominion. Or your slavery. You know if you're a victim or you're victorious by your joy. Because joy means that you have won every battle by the spirit of God. Joy means that you have won every battle. By the word of God. Your joy will confirm to you. How much you value God's presence. How much you cherish his presence. Your, your joy. Because when you cherish his presence. Cherish his, his, cherish his presence. You want to be the best experience so that his presence can enjoy you.
Self-confidence is so important. You got to have self-confidence. Because it affects your energy. Self-confidence gives you the boldness to qualify for future blessings. Your self-confidence gives you the boldness to qualify. Meaning you, you, you become exactly what that blessing requires, demands. Your joy is a thought system. Is a thought system. Is a word system. Your joy. And your thought system has to choose not to stay in the garden of weeds and tares. But to stay in the garden of flowers and roses and lilies. You ever wonder why King Jesus is called the lily of the valley? Because even in the valley you have found something beautiful. You have found someone beautiful. Jesus himself. He's the lily of the valley. Because even a valley is a garden. A valley is a garden where you're tested the most. And you have to learn how to, do, to study the beauty. And the only way you can do that is by praise. Praising God. Is the studying of his beauty. Praising God. Is the studying of his wondrous appearance. Saints, King Jesus is very attractive. That's why I say keep your mind stayed on him. If you can't focus on Jesus, it's because sin is attractive to you. Demons are attractive to you. Imagine considering an ugly demon beautiful. Well, I don't consider it beautiful, Prophet John. I don't consider it beautiful at all. I don't believe it's beautiful. If it's not beautiful, then why does it have your attention? If bitterness is not beautiful to you, why does it control you? If stress and worry, if fear, if it's not beautiful to you, why does it control your productivity? Imagine that. If you say it's not beautiful for... Towards you, it shouldn't have so much control over your concentration. Why does worry rule your life if it's not beautiful to you? Corruption is when what's ugly becomes beautified to your mind. It becomes beautiful to your thought system. Temptation is ugly things that you have thought about beautifully. Did you catch that? Temptation is ugly things that you have thought about beautifully. Isn't that powerful how I said that there? Temptation is ugly things that you have thought about beautifully. So it's ugly, but you think about it in a beautiful place. It's dangerous, but you think about it in a safe place. It's destructive, but you think about it in a prosperous place. It brings devalue. It devalues you. It demeans you. But you think about it in a dignified place. Saints, you have to esteem your anointing high. When you esteem your anointing high, you'll realize what is not worthy to access your anointing, bother your anointing, destroy your anointing, weaken your anointing, infect your anointing. Esteem your anointing high and grow that anointing to the next degree and attract more anointing, attract more power. Power is the reward for how you manage the presence of God in the present of God. Your present day is supposed to keep on managing God's presence all throughout today. 
When I say manage his presence, I'm not talking about God being a child. But yet you must learn how to baby him. See, God don't want to have to baby you with instructions. He want to baby you with blessings. He don't want to baby you with correction. He want to baby you with harvests. Let God baby you the correct way, not the baby you in the way that you're not growing. But the baby in you in the reward for the fact that you are growing. By the way, this is a stand. <laughs> this is a stand that you pit, you know, you pit. This is a stand. This ain't had to clarify just in case it got taken out of contact. This is a stand. This is a stand. This is a stand. This is, I just had to. I just had to clarify because I had pulled it out earlier. Hey, what? So, so I just I'll pull it out. Your decision to take care of your man of God allows God to fulfill his fantasy and decision to take care of you. God has a fantasy to feed you, to clothe you, to take you shopping. God has a fantasy to treat you like royalty, a royal priesthood. God has a fantasy to give you abundance. God has a fantasy to give you increase. God has a fantasy to give you overflow. God has a fantasy to answer prayers that you thought that he never even listened to. You know, God is so intrigued with you. He's so, the Lord is so fascinated with you that he's holding on to things that you said to him three years ago. Now, bountiful sowing is different than just sowing. You know why? Because bountiful sowing is where you take seed faith and you explore the high places of it. Bountiful sowing is where you become a student of honor. And God's life means more to you than your own life. The body of Christ means more to you than your own body. God's plans mean more to you than your plans. It's glorious. Think about this. It's supernatural. When you start taking money and sowing it in large amounts to someone sent by God over you, You receive becoming a joint heir in being rich. You receive becoming a joint heir in being wealthy. You receive becoming a joint heir in favor, open windows, open gates, open doors, open opportunities. The seed does open heart surgery on God. Did you catch that? The seed goes into God's heart and searches out God's heart. That's why the more you sow, the more you take on different abilities and talents. That's why the more you sow, the more you take on different graces and behaviors and conducts and words and thoughts. Because the, the bountiful sower 
cuts into God's heart and sees what he is thinking, what he's wanting, what he's longing for. Your reverence of God is the preference of God. And the seed is reverential fear of who God is. Your reverence of God is the preference of God. And your seed is reverential fear. You are showing how much you fear God every time you recognize that something he has given you is an opportunity for you to give it back to him passionately and cheerfully so that he can multiply it and give you more. And then you can do it again. He give you more. And then you can do it again. He give you more. Then you can do it again. And guess what? The more you do it, the more you have. Before you know it, you're rich. Before you know it, you're wealthy. Because you're taking what you have. You're giving it to him. And you're exploring the depths of sowing. You're exploring the dimensions of the seed. You're exploring how great thou art, O Lord. And he manifests his greatness. Saints, imagine this. When I sow a seed, I'm conversing with God about his greatness. So he's not going to disappoint me. And say, well, hey, I'm not really all that great. You know, I, I just put on a show. You know, I didn't really mean that. I'm not really all that great. But thank you for uh, giving me a chance. But I, I want to give you a refund let you know I'm not all that great. Saints, the Lord loves to take on your praises unto him as factual. And he interacts and acts on what you say about him. So if you see the Lord and you decree the Lord as your blesser, as your investor. His role is to show you how well he honors. Saints, the reason why God loves when you perfect your excellence because God perfects his excellence towards you. He does things towards you at the highest, even giving you money. So when you want to give God money at the highest, you unlock the ability of God, the God of all grace, to give you money at the highest. Now what I love about the seed, that the seed works for health. The seed works for health. The seed works for health. You can sow and aim your seed at physical recovery. Physical healing. The seed works for health. You can use money and name the money that your health would be blessed. That wholeness would operate in you, in your body, in your soul, in your spirit. The seed releases the healing power of Jesus. I have sown for health. And I've received harvests of health. Harvests of energy. Feeling good in my body. Feeling energetic. Feeling the life of Jesus in my bones. Feeling the anointing of the spirit in my blood, in my body, in my cells. Feeling rejuvenating, feeling energetic, feeling momentum. 